We are Cry Wolf, and you're watching Bay Area Rocks. You're watching Bay Area Rocks, and I'm here with Cry Wolf. You guys introduce yourselves. I'm Tim Hall, Chris Moore, Phil Deckard, and Steve McKnight. Sweet. So you guys have been around since the um, mid '80s, and you start out in San Francisco, right? You guys yeah, are native. The Bay Area. Three of us are from the Bay Area. My, uh, myself, Tim, and Phil. And then uh, our newest member, Chris, is a is a Southern California boy. That's right. Guy, guy, not dude, dude. Yeah, original drummer. Original drummer for what was. Uh, uh, he moved to Minneapolis, so logistics. It makes it real difficult for him to come out to like the Avalon and Santa Clara to do gigs. So, um, so he gave so us our, he gave us a blessing, and he says, "Carry on." So then we got Chris. Sweet. So how did you guys get the name Cry Wolf? Well, there was this uh, name contest that we had in. Uh, I don't know if anybody remembers Bam Magazine, Barry Music Magazine. Anybody? Yeah. All right, all three of you. <laughs> so uh, we ran a contest for uh, a name. And what we were hoping to get out of it was, you know, a good mailing list that we could start hitting for shows. And um, some of the names that came out were Bastard Sword, P.S. Dump Your Boyfriend. Dr. Uh, Dr. Ruthless. I actually <laughs> like that Dr. one. Dr. Ruthless. Pretty cool. <laughs> so, so uh, Cry Wolf. Crash Mannequin. That was another one. Yeah, so the winner, uh, we, we gave uh, some tickets to a Motley Crue show. And, and so the winner was Cry Wolf, and we, it stuck. Sweet. Yeah. So tell me about your new album, 2010. Me? We're excited. I'll tell you. So the deal was Cry Wolf, uh, you know, over the years had, had written a ton of material, and uh, I started listening to it as I was joining the band, and I was like, man, this is phenomenal stuff. we got to do a CD. And uh, so we started working on it together, and I learned the tunes, and then we all put our new stink on them because it, it, they had been written over a period of years. And you can actually hear that progression on the CD. So anyway... Uh, it's just, it's, it's the new Cry Wolf. We're if you listen really hard, you can actually smell it. Yeah, you can smell it, yeah. And uh, we're just super excited, man. It's, yeah. just sniff. It was mixed. That would be awesome. Yeah. It was mixed by Bob Daspit, the guy who does all the Sammy Hagar stuff. He's phenomenal. And, and you know, we wanted a, a real organic kind of sound and, and real natural sounding. So we were kind of going for that rather than that overproduced heavy, you know, all the compression stuff. So it's, uh, it, trust me, you'll dig it. Yeah. I can't wait to hear it. it. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah, no problem. So you guys actually have gone on tour with like Judas Priest and George Lynch and all that stuff. Shows, yeah, we've done shows. There was a there was a big forum where all the bands uh, raided a hotel. It was like the Sheraton near the LAX, and um, so we went on. I think um, it was uh, just before Judas Priest and in another room, Lynch Mob and Extreme. So there was all these bands playing in the different banks. Alice and Chains. Alice and Chains. Yeah, Alice and Chains. I love Alice and Chains. Oh yeah. Yeah, Oh yeah. So, um, so yeah, we've done shows with them. Uh, we got to do a show with one of our favorite bands in Florida. They had this uh, big radio show that they did outdoors in Florida. No. <laughs> no. Sabotage? Well, they were on the bill. Was it a trickster? No. I'm sorry, guys. I just puked in my mouth a little bit. Um, so, actually, it was King's X. Oh, yeah. Yeah, King's Absolutely, X. one we're of our favorites. Fans. Yeah, they're they're such cool guys, and um, the bass player even wore our T-shirt. It was awesome, and. Uh, Mr. Doug Pinnock, and uh, just amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. So we had a chance to play with some really great people. Awesome. Yeah. So you guys are, are you still big over in Japan, or have you been they're back still, there? They're still, s- yeah, comparatively. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tall, tall standing and tall on our back, comparatively. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> and we're hoping I'm actually to go back this year as well. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, there's been talk about us bringing us back, and uh, we're yeah. really looking forward to that. Sweet. So um, what... Shows do you have coming up uh, besides Avalon tonight? Do you have anything that's coming up that you want to talk we about? Have, we have other shows that we're working on. Um, we're going to be doing more shows for uh, Man Down Productions. Great. That's and great. yeah, they're great. They're Thank good guys. Yeah, yeah, guys. yeah, yeah. Jimmy's great. And um, so some some more shows up here because we're from here, and uh, it's been quite a while. A little, you know, about a year or so since we've been back here. So this is cool. Let me. Yeah. Some yeah. good shows out there, and so we'll probably be out there. We did a big show with Doc in, uh, in October. And with the Bullet Boys out there and, you know, large crowds and the right kind of shows for us to be playing. It was great. I heard you guys used to sell out the Omni oh, yeah. uh, back in the yeah, day. Yeah. So how has the music scene changed in your eyes since, um, you know, moving to L.A. and coming back to San Francisco? Have you seen any different thing or any local bands that you're looking out that you like around San Francisco? 
Well, the Omni doesn't exist anymore. That's one big thing I've We're noticed about it. it. I think it's still empty, too, the Omni. Yeah, I don't think there's... Yeah, it's such a yeah. great... Such a I thought great it turned into a Portuguese restaurant or something. Or what was it? Well, I think the Berkeley wow. Square actually turned into a church and then something oh, like oh, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, uh, <clears throat> well, I mean, I, one, one of the things that I am personally happy about, because when... When the band reformed and we're looking for places to play and we want to come back up to the Bay Area, that's where we're from, um, there didn't – it seemed like there weren't that many places as there were when we lived here previously. You know, you had – before you had the Stone, you had the Keystone Berkeley, you had the Keystone Palo Alto, the Omni, other places that you could play, the Mabuhay Gardens, the – you know. But, but now with the Avalon, though, I think that's an avenue that a lot of bands, like even tonight, like Striper coming in and playing with us tonight – I think that's a, an avenue that a lot of bands can finally start utilizing to, to kind of bring back uh, uh, the, the, this type of music into the Bay Area again, which is, you know, because otherwise you have bars and grills, which are great, but, you know, a venue like this, I think, is, is something different, something special. Yeah, it was funny. We were trying to set gigs up, and we were getting this whole thing of, uh, you know, are you guys a cover band or are you a tribute band? And, and we were like, no, we play original music. And, and they were... Oh, we, well, we only book, you know, cover bands or tribute bands, and it's just, it's a weird scene, that's, you know, it's a different world. Trend, you know, and I don't yeah. think that that's just regional. I think everywhere, you know, and it you know, has to do somewhat with the economy. And I think people these days, yeah. people these days, you know, I mean, I think they, it might be even generational because people today, I mean, they're spending a lot more time in front of a computer screen. And if you can see something on Palladia or if you can see something online that's, that's podcasted or whatever it is, live casted, not too many people are going out to clubs these days, it seems. And because of the economy, too, I think. So th- I think that's part of it. People just aren't going out. And, but there's a, I really think that there's a whole generation of people that are kind of around the time that we were that um, I, don't, I don't see that it's represented in the mainstream. I don't think, I, I don't think there's, uh, there's, a, there's a big audience for it, and they don't have a voice. And I think bands like Striper, Doc, and the reason they're still out and playing is because the audience is there. It's just not picked up in a larger way. So this is great that we can we can do it at this at this level too, and, and continue to play and do shows with guys like that and Doc and, and uh, you know Fuel. We did a show at the House of Blues in Anaheim with Fuel. It was great. Just that's a great opportunity. Well, we're doing a show with Barney. That's what. <laughs> well, actually, it's more of a he's offered himself up for sacrifice. That's right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna launch him into the crowd tonight. Uh, no, it's it'll be at a, at a disclosed location later, but um, yeah, yeah. it's going to be a, a huge event. Are we actually Barney offering Barney? Yeah, uh-huh. exactly. A Barney sacrifice. Yeah. It like may a, be a burnt it, Barney. Is offering. it like Burning Man where they burn the Barney at the end? <laughs> they light that that uh, toxic fur on fire. <laughs> the faux fur. Altar, yeah. bar- altar of Barney. Altar of Barney. And also SpongeBob Square Thong, so that'll yeah. be kind of weird. Oh, you wore one. <laughs> Oh, sweet. Yeah, yeah, he didn't get a Brazilian, too, so it was, like, all over the place. Not a, <laughs> not a thong. He wears a square sponge, and that's yeah. really weird. That's, really that's kind of weird. So it's quite absorbent, though. How have you guys felt that you have progressed as a band since the 80s? Well, I'll tell you. What's that? Humor has gotten, sicker. You know, <laughs> humor has gotten a little <laughs> sicker. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I'll tell you kind of my story behind it. I mean, with the band we formed originally in the mid-80s, as okay. you know. Um, we moved to L.A., and we played around the club scene. We toured. We went to Japan a few times. The band ended up breaking up in 94. And we all went in our separate ways. Tim and I continued to play together. Steve went to do soundtrack music and that kind of thing. And our drummer, Paul, moved away and so forth. Died in a bizarre gardening accident. Bizarre gardening yeah, accident. Sorry. And um, what, what happened was we had the idea to do a reunion show, and this was in the, at around 2006. And so finally, when all the stars aligned for that to happen, um, we all got together. So we decided on the date. We decided on the place. And up to that point, we hadn't played together yet. You know, we all practiced on our own and got our parts together. But then when we came up to the barrier and we actually finally played together, the original guys, it was sounded better than it ever did when we were young. And we, I remember with Steve and Paul and I, our drummer, we all looked at each other and we were like, this is absolutely amazing. We sound better than we did before. Um, so that started the, roll, the ball rolling to try to get back together again on a permanent basis. Well, it, didn't, it ended up not happening with Paul. But Steve and Chris started playing together in another band. Um, and I had the opportunity to jam with Chris and Steve both. And the first time I played with Chris, I said to Steve, I'm like, this is the guy we need. This is the missing link. This is the guy that Crywolf needs to make it a real band again. 
My plan and worked. Yes. <laughs> actually, actually, what happened was I was playing with Chris in a band called Death Riders with the original singer from Anthrax, Neil Turbin. So that was more of a that was more kind of a traditional, almost European metal. You know, like uh, 100, it, for those musicians out there, 192 beats a minute with double bass. <laughs> so, um, so there was that going on. And um, so I just knew that we locked in. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to this guy, see, what's, see yeah. where this goes. Um, and Phil was right. We had this opportunity to um, hook up with a singer that came out of uh, Ireland. And he wanted to do some showcase for some. He came out, he flew out to the U.S. to do some showcases. And um, so what I was saying is, and, hey, while we're waiting for him to show up, why don't we work on some Cry Wolf tunes? Yeah. 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 Snuck in there. Yeah. That's right. Let's just jam and see what happens. You know, it's funny. I know exactly what was going to happen. <laughs> and, as the idea, and the idea of Chris joining the band, Steve never said anything to me about it. He was just like, you know, let's just do this thing and, and just play with him. And so I'm the one that went to, went to Steve afterwards and to Tim, and I'm like, this is the guy. And Steve didn't say anything because he didn't want to plant any seeds that, you know, that he was playing favoritism or anything uh, like that. I, I didn't want to want him to he think I was manipulative, you know, uh, or in, anything. In the background, he's like this, though. So. Oh. to fly him out to the Smithsonian to show him this little plaque that says reserved for Chris Moore. See, I I in the history of naturalization, I told you, he's the missing link. That's See? Missing it was just like right. homo... Something. A homo retardus over here, and, and you know, whatever. And then Chris Moore in the middle, missing link. Yeah. Okay, it was a long shot. But. Right on. So, if you guys had a chance to go on tour with any band, what band would you like to share the stage with? You too. Because they play in front of 150,000 people a night. That might yeah, be a good one. Oh yeah. <laughs> or Muse. <laughs> yeah, oh, Muse. Amazing. Alice in Chains. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, we. Beatles. Beatles. <laughs> Beatles. 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 Some resurrect, resurrecting. A little tough, a little tough yeah. yeah. Uh, King's X. Yeah. I'd love to play with them again, sure. I mean, but, you know, it was cool. Like, we, we got to... Fuel is one of my favorite bands of all time. And, uh, and I was playing with those guys for a while, and so we had a good connection with them. And so to play with those guys in the band and then to actually go, you know, open for them and stuff was like... Unreal, and then uh, you know to play with Dokken and Bullet Boys, and now you know the thing with Striper tonight. It's like, it's a really cool yeah. feeling, man. You, yeah. And going going way going way way back, I loved Striper, and it's 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 this is kind of an exciting thing for me tonight to be able to share the stage with them. Yep. You know, so yeah. but as far as touring, I mean, we're pretty much open. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yeah. So. Bono, <laughs> Bono, come on, dude. So, Eddie, you know, Eddie, these, there's lots Dave, of, and come on, talk Ed, about yeah. this. See that guy's shirt over there? Yeah. In the, in, yeah. in the immortal words of Tom Bodet, we'll leave that on for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, yeah. you know, there's this there's this great thing of all these festivals popping up, kind of May through August, that that uh, feature kind of the style of music we're playing, but kind of in a range, you know. So there's some opportunities there. What we're hoping to do is build on this and see where we can take it and get up to the festival level. I mean, the good thing about this is we did this completely on our own. We don't owe anybody any money. We pay for the recording ourselves. We're doing our own website. We're doing our own marketing. We hired a guy to do marketing with us. So we're doing this on our own. It'd be great to, you know, even connect with the really key management publicists, those kind of people as well. But um, that's the good thing is we're pretty free and clear. Yeah. So, so that's You good. guys were signed to Sony, weren't you, yeah. like back in, in the day? In Japan, Sony here, and then part of IRS in the U.S. Oh, wow. We actually got signed in the U.S. or in Japan before here. So it was Epic Sony in Japan. And then uh, in here was IRS, and yeah, so that's why we we were able to get on tour in the U.S., uh, Canada, and Japan, obviously. So, yeah. So, what made you want to start playing music? Hmm. I was no good at football, or too small, <laughs> too small for you football. Big. I was about a ninety-pound, fourteen-year-old, so <laughs> and that was the turning point. Sweet. Well, good thing, right? Yeah. Me playing drums? Yeah. Kiss Alive one. <laughs> one. Period. Yeah. Peter Chris's kit, that was it. I was in. Sweet. Yeah. Um, that's a really good question. My my father played guitar and I I wanted to play guitar as well and I so I'd play along with a lot of the like the, the Eagles and Bread albums of the time. And then um, then I discovered Van Halen and uh, Queen. And and then it was all over, and I started yeah. getting in. Once I saw Tom Hamilton play from Aerosmith, I was like, "That is, is my guy." Is. And that's kind of what set me on the path to to where I'm standing here talking to you now. Exactly. Oh, and also one more thing: with the drummer in the Partridge family's name was Chris too, and that right when I was a little little kid, I was paper drums, so I put his. Uh -oh. 
I don't know what's going on. Neither do I. Say some fire drill. Have, it's a fire you drill. You have rested. Did he say something the about it for you? Over. Did yeah. he say they're beating up a poet? <laughs> yeah. 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 Stamped, I guess. Uh-huh. I, don't know what's going I guess so. On. Yeah. Well, um, is there anything you'd like to say to your fans before uh, we leave the interview? Uh, yes. This unearthly plane. I know you guys have to be on stage pretty soon and everything like that. So, and and you do have longtime fans that like oh, on yeah. MySpace. That's pretty much why you guys got back together, wasn't it? Was all your fans oh, from yeah, MySpace right. saying, "Get back together." So, what would you like to say to your fans? Oh, we really appreciate all the support. Um, it's humbling that you actually <laughs> remembered you more so than I do. But uh, yeah, um, just just a minute. We got it. Um, and so I just wanted to thank you for all the support and say, hey, you know, we're here for it. And uh, please, let's stay in touch. We have all the different sites. And the great thing is we can get in touch with you online, t- talk with you directly. We want to get over to you and play and just get out and support The Rock. Quick, give me your, uh, where people can connect with you, and then we'll go get a stamp. www.crywolftheband.com. And that links to everything. Sweet. Well, thank you for the interview. We really, so pre- yeah, we yeah. appreciate it. Bay Area Rocks. Thank you. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot. We can't wait to see you guys play Absolutely. and rock it. Woo! 2010. Cry Wolf. Woo!